In this video, we're going to show you how to install a brand new sink strainer and drain here for your kitchen sink. We're going to show you everything you need to know about the anatomy of it, how it works, how to remove the old one, all the mistakes to avoid, the common mistakes that people make, and we're going to show you a couple of useful tools that will help you get this job done better. Okay, so here's your drain. So it's gonna sit like this in the drain hole in the sink. So I want you to remember the order that we're undoing these things because I'm gonna show you these. This is the nut. This is the big sink drain nut. And when it hits the end, it'll pop right off. Okay, then you have this little paper washer we, or cardboard, some people call it cardboard, sometimes it's a little thicker than this, is actually called a friction washer. And I'll show you in a second what it means when we take a look at the gasket. So here's your black gasket. That See, the down. black gasket here is going to go on first. Let me just turn it upside down to show you. So here's the underside of the drain. When you're Lying on your back looking up, this is what you're going to see. Threads and you're going to put the gasket on first. And then this friction ring here, the reason why we call this a friction ring, and I prefer to have the white side here because it's the shinier. What this does is as you're screwing down the nut on here, what would happen, and this is where a lot of people run into trouble, so this is one of the, the mistakes that a lot of people make, is they over tighten this thing and they forget to put this friction washer on. And what happens is it squeezes down and puts too much pressure on the gasket and it warps the gasket, it stretches it, it shoves it to one side, it does a million different things other than tighten it down. So what that friction washer does is it takes all of that friction between this moving nut and that stationary gasket and it separates the two. So the more, all, that way all you're doing using that friction gasket is pushing straight down on the black gasket. You're not doing any other kind of friction pushing or twisting or bunching up or binding. So that's why you must have that. And if you don't, you're gonna run into problems. Okay, so let's take a look at what comes in the entire kit. And so we can get accustomed to how this is all going to fit. Let's get acquainted with all of these parts here that we might need. Now, some people always ask me, can I just buy a new gasket? You, you probably could, but the whole thing's under 10 bucks. Why not buy the whole thing? That's what I do. Okay, so let's start at the bottom. They usually come with this sort of brass colored nut and it also has here this washer. Now this washer is made to fit down onto this flat part of this. So what happens is if you look at the bottom of the nut, see how it's flat and flanged out there at the bottom? You put your gasket in here like this and he's gonna go through the bottom there like that, see? And that's what will help seal that against the bottom of the drain assembly. Okay, I just want to show you real quick. There's two types of pipes we're going to use. So this is your flanged kitchen sink strainer tailpipe, and you have to use that flat top flanged pipe. This is typical of what most of you will have. So what you do is you take your hi-hat washer and you seat it right up top there. And then the nut is going to come up from underneath the pipe and you bring it up to the top like that. And then it will screw onto the bottom of the drain there. Okay, so here's a close up view. And there's your hi-hat gasket. You put it in right there. And the nut comes up from underneath. And we screw it right into the bottom of the drain right there, see? So if you look all the way around the perimeter of your drain, you see that white plastic right there? That is your hi-hat washer that we just installed from underneath. And that's pretty simple. And let's go back inside and take a look at the other case where we have the dishwasher coming into this. Okay, so underneath the sink, you would have your downspout tailpipe like this and then it'll screw to the bottom here of the drain opening. But notice we have a different one. We have a tailpipe that's got a dishwasher branch right here. Now you probably might not have this, so you would just have this regular tube with that little flanged top here. Do not buy an extension tube. That's not what you're supposed to use here. You're supposed to use a tailpipe tube that has this flat top. And so normally we would take our metal nut that comes in the package and it will slide up the top here. But since this already has its own nut integrated on there, we're not going to use it. This will go away. This plastic nut is taking the place of this metal nut. Okay, and then remember, before you attach the tailpipe to the bottom of the drain, you would put this hi-hat or flanged gasket on there, right there. And then you'll screw it to the bottom with the nut. So let me just show you, because this is what will happen under your sink. So here you go. So that's what you're going to do, and that's how it's going to 
secure to the bottom. And don't forget to put that hi-hat in there. That's what a lot of people forget, and they can end up with leaks. Okay, so let me just show you close up again what's actually happening underneath the sink, right? So your tailpipe is going to come up underneath the drain. Your drain will be here. You got to put in that flanged gasket there on top of it. Don't forget. And then you'll mount it to the bottom of the drain like that. And then you'll just secure it with the nut. So there you go. Just like that. Okay, so now to remove your old one, you can use a screwdriver and just use a hammer to tap at, at these tabs here to force the, the nut loose. You use this kitchen sink drain wrench into the little tabs. So you line it up with the nut like that. You hold the center part here. You slowly turn the wrench here, see, and loosen that. That's what makes it so powerful, just because it's so effortless to get it lined up around all these tabs. And then you just loosen the nut here. Probably want to undo this nut first and get the tailpipe off of there because when the nut comes off of here you're going to slide it right down the pipe and make sure you've collected both washers make sure you have your friction washer and the gasket make sure you have both of those off of there and then you can force this up and then into the sink and then make sure that you clean this entire area of any residue of old plumber's putty okay so now you can see there's all of this residue around the flange of your drain so you want to clean all of that out thoroughly you don't want anything interfering with your new layer of plumber's putty that you're going to apply now this right here is probably one of the most useful tools ever this is a drain wrench and this is what I suggest everybody get, because I think you can get them for about $10 or so. Coming up from underneath the nut, and you see how these tabs here all fit right inside the slots there on the wrench? Fits around, and the reason why you see so many of these holes is it's a universal fit. To loosen or tighten this thing just very easily, because, you know, tightening by hand isn't enough with these once you're putting these on, and you need to tighten against that gasket right there. So some people will use a screwdriver, but that only just kind of gets up against one of these, and then you, you need to have enough angle to get there with a the hammer. It's just a pain. This slides right up the pipe. Boom, like that. It's so much easier. Okay, so now we're going to apply the plumber's putty around here. Some people like to use silicone, which is probably a better sealant. A lot of plumbers are old school and like the tried and true plumber's putty. I always buy stain free. Make sure you get the plumber's putty here that says for use on granite, marble, quartz, Sandstone. Now we're using stainless steel sink here, so that's not a problem for us. But just in case, as a failsafe, I always make sure I use this one, the stain free. You never know what kind of sink you're going to be ending up on, and you don't want to show up at someone's house or a friend and help them out and find out you have the wrong type of putty. You're going to be in big trouble. The petroleum products that are in there and chemicals or whatever will obviously cause and staining on natural stone. And I usually do it in two pieces because you're not going to get a a bead long enough to go all the way around. So the first piece usually covers one half. And my rule of thumb, folks, is after everything oozes out when we're done with the plumber's putty, I don't ever put it back in. Once it's been out, handled and all that, it's just, to me it's potentially contaminated. Why take the risk that you're gonna have a failure later with the plumber's putty? So I just wanna make sure we have a good thick bead that's continuous all the way around. Now that the drain has the putty on there, we're going to just set it right here and you're going to mash it down. Now, before you mash it down, if there's any text or a name or anything, make sure the name is the correct orientation. Just keep pushing it down and down and down. Don't remove any excess putty just yet. I don't remove any of the excess until the drain basket here is completely tightened down. I know we're covering a lot of topics and a lot of details, but it's important for you to know these things. You leave out any of these steps you're going to be in big trouble. Okay, so now that we've gotten the drain basket mashed through and down into that escutcheon that's on the top side, we do need to clean all of this off. So this part here you want to remove. Don't remove the putty from the top side yet. I want to come around here and just get as much off as I can off of these threads before we continue to put the gaskets and everything else up. And then I want to make sure this flange right up here is nice and clean. Okay, we're nice and clean now. Remember our pecking order, folks. Gasket first, then comes the friction washer. And I like to do the shiny side down up against the nut, and then the nut will go. So I stack them all three up. 
and just start to screw them on. Sometimes these can be tricky to get them started. So a good trick to do is to put the nut up on there backwards like that. Go a little bit backwards until you feel it click upward. And then you can start threading it. See? It's a nice little trick. That works on most nuts and bolts if you're having trouble getting it to thread on. So you screw it all the way in up there like that. Usually go nice, good, and hand tight. Now I'm going to take my tool, insert it up in there. See that? You just... It's just on there really nice. You can see how the washers are stacked up nice and evenly. See, there's no warping of the gasket or anything. What I try to do is hold the center as I'm tightening the nut. And then as you're tightening, you want to look up, up top and you want to make sure that, you're, that your strainer and flange and everything up here isn't walking sideways or moving or shifting. I just keep on tightening until I really feel like it's nice and snug and that I don't really see a whole lot more of the plumber's body oozing out of the top. Okay, now for the tailpipe. Remember what we said, we're ditching the metal nut because our branch tailpipe here already has one integral. So we're just going to make sure to, don't forget, put that hi-hat gasket in there. And you stick the pipe up in there. Now this, I usually like to hand tighten. And then you can use a pair of channel locks or our plumber's three-way wrench and just go a quarter of a turn. Nothing much more than that. You don't want to overstress these parts or crack nuts or crack the pipes or deform gaskets. I'm a big fan of not deforming gaskets and causing worse leaks. And so there is your finished product there with the downpipe. All right, so now you can clean off all of the excess plumber's putty. Make sure you do a good job. Get in there nice and tight. Get all of it up so that you can, you see as little as possible left. Now, as you go to form and fit your P-trap, you may decide here that you may have to cut this tailpipe up here, 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 maybe up here, in order to make it meet the waistline there. Some of you, now because this is the highest waistline we've ever seen from any builder, so if you have one that's down low, you can get an extension piece. See right here, you would get a one and a half inch extension tube. And this extension tube right here would go right onto there and buy you more distance down to the floor. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today, folks. And we'll see you on the next one.